Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith joined by Titans head coach Brian Callahan. Brian at this point you are 48 hours removed from Sunday's game in Orchard Park. Your final thoughts on the contest in Buffalo. Um, played really well early. Uh, put ourselves in a 10 10 nothing lead on the road in a really tough environment. Uh, couldn't find a way to, to finish the game made too many mistakes. Um, just have to find a way to, to clean up our details over the course of an entire game and uh, a game that should have been closer than it was but it got away from us in the second half and um, disappointing because I thought we had a chance to go beat that team at their place um, but didn't make enough plays I think uh, at the end of the day to do it and gave away too many opportunities on our end um, to give ourselves a chance to win. All right let's take a look now at some topics for Callahan on a couple of themes from Sunday's game. Let's start first of all with the tight ends. Chig Akakwo had four catches for 50 yards. Yeah, Chig did a great job. He was he found the, some soft spots in the zone. Uh, we found some, some ways to get him the ball. He, he had a really nice uh, sail route early in the game where he won on man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, it was just good to see Chig get involved and, and be active. The tight ends did a nice job in general uh, in the passing game in this game. Josh Wiley had three catches in the course of the ball game and he made some things happen as Picked up some good yardage, averaging over 10 yards a catch. Yep, a couple easy, easy throw and catches that, that got him into space and, and let his athleticism go do the rest and um, had a chance to get some quick throws in the ball in his hand and he did the rest. So it was, it was good to see him come alive a bit for us too. And the Titans get the football to Nick Vanette, the veteran tight end, who finishes the ball game with four catches, getting open for his quarterback, Mason Rudolph. And you know, Nick does a lot of the dirty work for us in the run game, and so things that complement that uh, in the passing game, getting the ball uh, off of some of the run actions uh, were really productive for us in the game, and he did a really nice job with uh, finishing with some extra yardage afterwards and some gritty finishes as well. So a uh, really nice game from him. Overall, the Titans tight ends 11 catches for over 100 yards. Yep. Next, let's talk about outside linebacker Arden Key's performance on Sunday as he put some things down in the stat column for sure. Yeah, he was disruptive most of the game. Uh, this early sack was, was fantastic. Uh, he was disruptive in the run game as well. Uh, made it really hard for him, especially early on in the, in the run game process when they're trying to get going. Um, he also had a, almost had a field goal block or blocked a PAT. Uh, just phenomenal effort by Arden all the way around and, and had a really nice game. Arden Key is a guy who's racked up a lot of quarterback pressures early in the season. You go back and watch the tape and you're like, man, is he close. He finally got home on Josh Allen. Yeah, and that's one of the things we, we got to keep harping on is just is finishing on the, on the quarterback. Uh, we've been around them quarterbacks a lot. We've been close. We have to do a better job of getting uh, to them and getting them on the ground when, when need be. So uh, step in the right direction, certainly. Here's Arden Key making the stop on Josh Allen down near the goal line. All right, our third topic for Callahan on. Amy Wells and I had a chance to visit with NFL analytics expert Cynthia Freeland on Monday. We covered a variety of topics, including the dynamic kickoff. Take a listen to this question and answer. With the addition of the dynamic kickoff, there's been a lot of changes, and I would assume there's been a lot of statistical changes as well. What's something that you have noticed about the way that that has impacted the game overall? If I were telling a team what to do right now, I would kick it into the end zone every single freaking time until I got into a high leverage situation later in the season, and then I would do something weird because they're not expecting it. But you're, you're, the where the line yard you're at is five, it's not a five yards different than it was before where you're starting in the average starting field position. So until they make it more punitive to kick it into the end zone, I, I, you're not going to see that. It's just more, it's just, you are seeing fewer injuries, which is great. We love that. We don't want any injuries on, you know, that was a highly injured part of the game, which is wonderful. And you're also seeing like, I, I just don't think we've seen the true strategy of it yet. Like we will see, there will be like some weird week 10, something weird's going to happen where a team that's maybe potentially playoff eligible. So look for these like historic coaches that have like special teams backgrounds. Like look at the Harbaugh's, look at, um, you know, uh, Sean Payton, guys who have like historically showed us things that are like, oh, damn, that is that is you got you got me good there in special teams specifically. All right. 
Brian Callahan, Cynthia Freeland, pretty knowledgeable. She understands all the analytics. Yep. Do you do you think somebody's going to uncover a way to utilize the new kickoff rule as we head down the stretch? Um, it's going to be interesting to see. There's there's been a lot of a lot of news and firsts and uh, experiences that no one's had before with with the new rule, and it's it's been kind of up and down depending on the team and. We've had some spots that it's been good. We've certainly kicked the ball out of the end zone most of the time. The issue that you have is when you go play up in Buffalo, you know the one end zone is going to be all wind, and so you're going to get returns. Um, it's just making the most of those returns. But I think most people are kicking in the end zone right now, and uh, there will be an opportunity, I think, at some point down the stretch for one of these plays to be game-changing. All right. That's Callahan on. Up next, a look at a league-wide initiative hitting home for a Titans player in his second season. More Titans football with Brian Callahan from the Bet MGM studio after this. The NFL introduced the Guardian cap to its players two seasons ago. Initially, it was to be worn during practices by players at certain positions. This season, the league has allowed players to wear it during games. And for Titans tight end Josh Wiley, it was an easy choice. Josh, you're one of the players in the National Football League who has decided that we're not just going to wear the Guardian caps during practice. We're going to wear them during the game as well. Um, what was your primary motivating factor for making that decision? Well, I had a concussion in training camp, and that's kind of where it started. And then once I realized, I learned after that that guys could start wearing them in the games. Uh, I thought it would just be a great opportunity, um, you know what I mean, for myself and my own health. But also I think something that goes into it too is hopefully other guys around the league start to see it. Hopefully, you know what I mean, in two, three, couple years, whatever it is, uh, you start seeing it more across the league. Does it really have any impact on the way your helmet feels on your head or the way that you play in a game or anything like that? I don't feel it at all. Uh, some guys say it feels a little heavy, but I don't feel nothing, so yeah, it's just a bonus, I guess. Second and one at the 40. Rudolph going to throw it to flat again. This is Wiley with room. Wiley 35, Wiley 30, and Wiley is run out of bounds by Hamlin with another first down and a really good gain. Were there conversations that you needed to have, whether it be with coaches or equipment or anything like that before you made this decision? Kind of went back and forth with EQ uh, and the trainers. Uh, just kind of what they thought. I uh, talked to um, one of our doctors, too. I ended up getting a new helmet, so I think that kind of plays a role. I think ultimately it was my decision. That's what I went with, and I'm, I don't ever plan on turning back. You're in your second year of your career. Is it rare for a young guy to be thinking about the implications of some of the injuries that you could sustain playing this game? Like I said, first and foremost, it was for my own health, um, for my own safety, of course. I think it's a great opportunity to use this as um, kind of a, a time to I mean, show guys across the league the differences and they can start collecting data on guys that wear it versus guys that don't. I think that's a really cool opportunity. Thanks to Amy Wells for sharing that with us. The Guardian cap, just one way for NFL players to continue to focus on their safety. Brian, everybody's for that. Absolutely. I'm surprised more guys aren't wearing it. Uh, truthfully, there's been uh, a lot of studies that have shown they're really effective in negating cut concussions and the effects of them. And for those guys to have that option, I think it's great that Josh is taking advantage of it. And the nice part, too, for these current NFL players they started wearing guardian caps when they were in high school. And so mm. when they came into the NFL, it wasn't that big a deal in terms of an adjustment. Yeah, there's no stigma for them. They mm. don't see anything different. They just see it as another way to protect themselves and uh, might as well take the opportunity that they're offering it. Uh, why not protect your head and your brain and uh, allow yourself to play football at a high level and one less thing to have to worry about as much. And gets Josh back out there and you like having him as part of the lineup. I certainly do. Yep, Josh Wiley. Coming up with some big plays. Hey, by the way, let's stick with the tight end theme. We're headed to the Telestrator to review the Titans tape next. More Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio as Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek, continues. Time for some Titans tape with the head coach. Tight end Chigakakwo tallied four catches for 
50 yards, four for four on targets, as a matter of fact. Brian, show us how this 26-yarder at the end of the first quarter, which was the longest play of the day for the offense, unfolded. Great. So this is a, a heavy personnel set uh, against this defense, and we knew on a you know first and first and ten style play, it was a heavy pressure team against us, and so they're bringing uh, this free safety off the edge. So we have a protection that's built to handle uh, that particular pressure. But the route concept here uh, is going to be this sort of sail route by by Chig and a clear out third level pylon route, and then we have the motion man that's going to chip and then the get into the flat. So it's just your traditional three level throw, all right, flood concept on the backside off a really hard play action uh, with a guard pull. So you see here, uh, as, as Nick Vanette comes back across, he's going to take the edge off the blitzer. Uh, Tony, Tony Pollard is going to fake. We get a guard pull here. Tony's going to wrap and protect the backside with, with Brunskill. Uh, and we get all this action here. Now, the best part about this is because they pressure, what ends up happening is we get Chig matched up on their third linebacker, which is a matchup we'll take. And he runs a really, really nice route uh, off of that linebacker. Great job by uh, Nick Westbrook clearing this thing out. Uh, and now we have a chance for an explosive play. But the, the key part of it, as always, is going to be what does the pocket look like. And you see here, one with the pulling guard, Nick Vanette and Tony Pollard. All right, everybody in position to block. Everybody we need to get blocked. And just a very clean, easy pocket for the quarterback to see, deliver, all right, and make a really nice throw right, for an explosive game. 26 yards on the play for the Titans as they get into Bill's territory. As you go back and look at this, too, mm -hmm. talking about Brunskill being here and having an opportunity to give you that extra offensive lineman, is it always about protection with him in the game? No, usually it's a lot about the run game, and that's why we, we package things the way we do. And he's involved in the run quite a bit. Um, but this was one of those chances we took uh, with sort of a run motion as well to marry up those things, to marry up some of our run game. Uh, we're a heavy gap scheme team as it is. And so now we get our, our pulling guard here as well with the motion across. All these things should tell the defense run, particularly with Brunskill in. Uh, he's obviously not going out for a pass yet. Um, but that allows us to get that sell. And so you see just the reaction from the defense. Uh, everything to them feels like run. So you get, you get everybody's in the line of scrimmage, the blitz is off the edge, and now we just get these pure one-on-ones down the field in this particular coverage structure uh, to allow us to get an explosive play. But really a great, great marriage of the run and pass game personnel, you know, with all these guys that are usually in here when running the football, um, Brunskill being a large part of that. It's a really good route by Chig, too. It is. And when you look at his route, you just see he feels, he knows he's got man coverage and we're into the boundary. So what he does a really nice job of is you see Chig understanding the leverage, he beats him, and then he squeezes him to stay on top. So as he gets in here, he starts to squeeze back to save space and then makes the break, and it allows this defender to see, uh, as you see, get all off balance and unable to cover the break on the cut. Chig's hard to cover for any linebacker. Speed and quickness there for Akakwo. Again, four catches, 50 yards on four targets overall. The three tight end package gives you more versatility in terms of play call than most people would think. They would they would normally think just it run. It does. It, it allows us to have a little more versatility, um, put some guys in position to get some matchups like we did there against, you know, our, our better tight end receiver against their probably third or fourth linebacker. Um, that's a matchup we'd take every time we can get it. Um, and so it was, we were thankful that it worked out that way. Well, we're thankful you showed it to us. Yeah, Thank you. you All it. right. We've got more to do. We'll introduce you to Ramonda Jordan, the wife of Titans running back coach Randy Jordan, who was honored as the team's 12th Titan before the last home game. That's up next. Titans football with Brian Callahan. We'll be right back. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but the NFL uses the 31 days to spotlight all types of cancer battles throughout their Crucial Catch initiative. Before the Titans' last home game, Ramonda Jordan, the wife of running back coach Randy Jordan, was honored as the 12th Titan of the game for her courageous battle against breast cancer. Her story is this week's Epic Western Genuine Article. Welcome your 12th Titan cancer survivor, Ramonda Jordan! 
Breast cancer was important to me because of my family. My mom was diagnosed uh, with breast cancer and she actually, she beat cancer twice. I was uh, diagnosed with stage three breast cancer in June of uh, 2023. It doesn't only affect, you know, the person that is physically affected. It affects the loved ones. You know, for him, um, the most difficult thing is that he wanted to walk through, like, every moment. Said I won't, won't cry. Um, been very blessed where Coach Callahan, he's allowed me to be, you know, on this journey in terms of her recovery. So um, I've been very blessed in terms of being fortunate to have people that understand. And I'm just so thankful for all the people that rallied, you know, with me from my husband's players and, and the Titans have been just amazing. Brian, unfortunately, it seems like everyone knows someone who's had cancer impact their lives. Why is it important for the NFL to continue to highlight cancer awareness? I think she said it best is that early detection. Uh, there's so many things that can be treated uh, in a manner that allows them uh, a, a chance at, at survival um, and, and effective treatment. And a lot of that starts with the ability to uh, not be afraid to go get appointments and not be afraid to go get checkups and be uh, aware that there's all these avenues for, for help and guidance in the process and uh, to allow people to know that everyone's affected by it to some degree. And, and if you are affected by it, there's a, a community of people uh, that surround you to help you with it. And um, I think it's a great initiative because I think this, everybody knows somebody that's been affected by cancer in some way, shape or form. And um, it's a good platform to raise awareness, particularly for early detection um, and making sure that you're doing the right things for yourself to get screened for all the possible cancers that you could, that are out there in the world. Randy and Ramonda, thank you for sharing your story with us as the Cancer Awareness Month goes on in the NFL. Next up for the Titans, a trip to the Motor City to face the Detroit Lions. Callahan's first look will get you ready when Titans football with Brian Callahan returns. This is a city of grit and grace. For dreamers and doers, a city with music in its soul and ice in its veins. A city built by Titans. Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. Here we go. The Detroit Lions are 5-1 and one and playing solid football in all three phases of the game. What kind of quarterback is your team facing in Jared Goff, Coach? Uh, he's playing probably as good as any quarterback in football right now, just in terms of efficiency, finding completions. Uh, it feels like every game I look up and he's got like four incompletions. You know, they've done a great job of finding their playmakers. He deals the ball. Jared's, I think, an underrated quarterback. He is probably playing as good as the position as good as anybody in football right now, um, and a large reason why they're they're five and one and, and playing fantastic. A lot of weapons on that offense. The Lions have a two-headed monster at the running back position. What do David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs do so well? Uh, what a great complement, skill set-wise. You know, with Montgomery being the hammer and um, and Gibbs being the the change of pace runner, and, and both of them are capable of scoring. Uh, they run hard. They run disciplined. Um, and they're both dynamic with the ball in their hand. Gibbs is, is one of my was one of my favorite players coming out of the draft uh, a year or two ago, and um, he has lived up to every expectation. I thought he would be able to perform in the NFL. He's been uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, both running and catching out of the backfield and making people miss. He's just a dynamic, dynamic football player. Speaking of a two-headed monster, the Lions also have one in the defensive backfield with safeties Brian Branch and Kirby Joseph. What challenges do these guys present? Well, you, they, they play really well together. You know, they're always around the football. They're really intelligent players. They anticipate like quarterbacks anticipate. They find zones, they find the soft spot, um, and they break on the football knowing where the ball is going to be delivered. And um, it's a rare combination to have guys like that that both play at such a highly intelligent level uh, and then have the skill set to go get it done. And um, again, their, their turnovers are a huge reason why they're 5 and 1 and playing so well on defense is um, they're taking the ball away and they're in the right spots. They're both always around the football. Those two safeties have all eight of the Lions' interceptions this season. That's Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. The Titans face the Detroit Lions on Sunday. You can listen to the broadcast on Titans Radio. 
Our coverage begins with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Kickoff is set for 12.02 from Ford Field. Titans Lions this Sunday on Titans Radio. For Coach Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith thanking you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.